Someday, 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 someday.
Good morning, Golden Heights. It's a privilege as well as a blessing to be able to talk with you again about Jesus and what he did on the old rugged cross. What a beautiful Sunday morning it is. It's beautiful because God has graciously given us a day that we've not seen before and we will not see again. I want to thank all of you, all the members of the New Golden Heights Church who have so diligently and faithfully uh, been faithful in the support of the church since we have been uh, shut down. Now, of course, you, you uh, have been watching television. And you've been reading about how that Florida has become a hot spot for the pandemic, uh, the coronavirus that's sweeping our country and our world, and how that Florida uh, is moving up to uh, number one, haven't gotten there yet, uh, in terms of the tragedies that's plaguing our nation. And so uh, you have been on your knees, you have been praying, and God uh, has been answering. Now we're moving toward our prayer uh, that precede our message for the morning, and we want to welcome uh, into our service and into <clears throat> our uh, worship this morning, uh, our media church from around the world, uh, members of Churches of Christ across the nation have been faithful in listening and viewing uh, our program, and we are most grateful for your uh, participation uh, in the services worship service virtually of the New Golden Heights Church of Christ. We're just grateful for um, your sharing with us. And the, uh, our media church is coming in and you are sending us greetings and we greet you, uh, that is members of uh, churches of Christ from around the world, we greet you. And we want you to know that we're just so grateful that uh, you are interested enough uh, to share in our worship here at the New Golden Heights Church of Christ. So from the New Golden Heights to all of those of you around the world, we are grateful for uh, your attention uh, and your stick to itiveness uh, as you share with us uh, in even another uh, presentation of God's everlasting word. So while our media church is coming in and while those around the world are getting comfortable to share in our service, we're gonna have a word of prayer. And we would ask you now, wherever you are, to bow your head and share with us in this prayer. Our Father and our God, we are just so grateful that you are our God and that you are our Father. And we want you to know, our Father, that we love you and we thank you for your care, for your mercy, for your love, for your grace, and for your favor. And we would ask our Father that you will bless all of the members of the New Golden Heights Church of Christ, uh, particularly and specifically we would ask that you bless in a special way all of our members who are ill, uh, sick, shut in, 
we are asking our Father that you will visit with them, strengthen them, strengthen their faith through your word, give them what they need for what they need it for, not just our sick members, but all of our members of the New Golden Heights Church. We pray for you that God will continue to bless you. Those in our media church uh, around the world, we pray for you. Hold on. I say, hold on. Whatever you're going through, hold on. Don't lose your faith. Wherever you are in the world, we pray for you that God will give you what you need for what you need it for. Bless us all as we go through these trying times and these trying moments of our lives. We know that you're going to bring us out on the other side. We believe that. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. For Jesus, we thank you. For you gave to us your beloved Son, that he might come to this world, carry out your original plan and purpose for the salvation of all mankind. And we pray now, our Father, that you will never leave us and that you will be with us and be everywhere with good. And we pray, our Father, that you will bless us this day and strengthen us that we might continue to love you more and serve you better. In the name of him who walked the boisterous waters and calmed the raging sea, called Lazarus from the grave and said, yes to the cross. In his name we pray, amen. God bless you, Media Church. I'm you in, uh, hopefully by now, and around the world. We've had a chance uh, for our uh, worldwide viewers to tune in. But specifically, we are grateful uh, to our great church wonderful members who love the Lord and who know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by him. Now, before I get into the message, and I, I'm, I'm, I, I rush to get into the message, and that is, uh, I want to thank the Golden Height membership for the First Lady, Sister Washington, whose birthday uh, was uh, last week. And many of the members of the church responded uh, in a very beautiful way. And she would want that I say to all of those of you who sent cards and made phone calls, uh, on her birthday, which was July 7th, she would want that I say thank you and God bless you. Now, <clears throat> we're still in 2 Timothy, uh, chapter number two, chapter number four, and verse number one. And, and our topic, of course, is the quick and the dead. Our subtopic is do not disparage the charge. Do not disparage the charge. It's important. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 is important not only to our older members of the body of Christ, but it is important to our millennials because you'll be hearing some things you have not heard before. But at the same time, uh, we send this message uh, to many of you who are listening, who are not members of the body of Christ, and we want to say to you, God bless you, and just know that the word of God is quick and powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Do not disparage the charge. And uh, 
We are at the first verse now of 2 Timothy chapter number 4. And, and you know what it says. You are there. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, but they shall heap to themselves. They shall heap to themselves. Teachers have an itching ears, and they shall turn away from the truth and shall be turned unto favor. We're dealing, of course, with that first. Uh, with that first verse, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, at, and I dealt with that at last time, at his appearing and his kingdom. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 is so important to those of us who are members of the body of Christ that it brings to mind, and Paul wants us to know, holding on to the word, preaching the word, teaching the word, preaching the gospel, maintaining the doctrine of the apostles is so important that Paul reference the judgment, which is but to say to those of us who are preachers and teachers and ministers in the body of Christ, don't you forget that the gospel, the word of God is so important that every time you preach it, preach it with a view of the judgment in that you're going to have to stand before the judgment bar of God. Now, I think I said last time that I would be dealing with the two dimensions uh, of the kingdom. Two dominions, not dimensions, two dominions of the kingdom. And, and quickly now, I'm going to... Uh, teach from that proposition this morning. Two dominions of the kingdom. D-O-M-I-N-I-O-N-S. Dominions. The two dominions of the kingdom. That's what's going on here in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 1 where Paul said, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who should judge the quick and the dead at his appearance, at his appearing. And that reference is the second coming of Jesus Christ. But now the two dominions of the kingdom, I'll say as much about the kingdom as I possibly can, and then I'll deal with the two dominions of the kingdom. So just know, those of you who are members of the body of Christ and those of you who are members, uh, who are not members of the body of Christ, just know that there uh, are two dominions uh, of the kingdom. There are two dominions, D-O-M-I-N-I-O-N, two dominions of the kingdom. Now, let me define dominion for you so you'll know exactly uh, what we are discussing and what I want you to get out of this message this morning in terms of your theological education. Dominions. There are several definitions for the word dominion. Dominion is a tricky word, but I don't want to deal with that. Uh, not only is it, is it a tricky word, but it is a pregnant word. Uh, that is, it has uh, a multiplicity of definitions. Uh, but I'm going to uh, deal uh, with it from the standpoint of what it means to those of us who are members of the body of Christ. Definition now, uh, get ready to write this down. Definition of the word dominion. Dominion means power. Dominion means rule. Dominions means authority. Dominion means reign, R-E-I-G-N. Dominion means kingdom. Now, uh, once again, the word dominion. The word dominion means power. 
The word dominion means rule. The word dominion means authority. The word dominion means reign. The word R-E-I-G-N. The word dominion means kingdom. So when we speak of the dominion of the kingdom, uh, we are talking about power. And you want to highlight that word power because that's, that's going to be important. Uh, power. I'll come back to that in a minute. Power. Uh, uh, and then, of course, the second word I gave you is rule. And the third word is authority. Uh, and the fourth word is reign. And the fifth word is kingdom. Now, we first meet this word, dominion, in the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis, uh, chapter number 1, verse number 28, where God gave dominion to Adam and Eve. He gave them dominion over the earth and all of the living creatures on the earth. He gave them dominion. Now that word dimension, dominion in the Hebrew is manleka. Manleka. Uh, manleka means dominion. It means rule. It means authority. It means power. It means reign. Uh, and it means, uh, in, in many instances, it means kingdom. So God gave them dominion. Now, but understand the definitions. Uh, Genesis chapter 1 in verse uh, 27, 28, uh, God gave them dominion. Uh, what did God do? He gave them dominion. To do what? To rule. To do what? To have authority. To do what? To reign. To do what? Establish a kingdom. Establish a kingdom. And not only establish a kingdom, but rule, have power over all of the creatures of the earth that was created by God. So now, once again, it's important that you understand this point, because if you miss this point in this introduction, you're really going to miss the point uh, of the message this morning. Dominion. I'm talking about the two dominion of the kingdom. Now the first dominion of the kingdom, of course, is the Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. And this is where God created. Uh, God's desire was to create a kingdom on earth as it was in heaven. That was God's intent. And he was going to uh, put the newly created uh, people, Adam and Eve, in charge of the kingdom uh, on the earth. So God was going to uh, create, and he did create, that whole creation in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 uh, was God's intent, God's desire to set up a kingdom on earth as it was and as it is in heaven. And this he did. Now that's important to understand. So uh, when God created Adam and Eve and gave them dominion, he gave them rule, he gave them power, he gave them authority, he gave them the ability to reign, uh, he gave them a kingdom. And so now we find ourselves in the Garden of Eden uh, with a kingdom. And several things has happened, and you know what uh, these several things are. Several things has happened now. Uh, Adam and Eve has been given uh, a kingdom. And this kingdom is designed uh, for them to rule in and over. And this was God's purpose to establish a kingdom on earth. Uh, Matthew chapter number six on the Sermon on the Mount. 
uh, thy kingdom come uh, on earth as it is in heaven. Of course, Jesus was saying to his disciples, this is what you pray for. You pray for this new kingdom on earth uh, to come to earth and be established in the earth as was intended by God Almighty. And so uh, the first time we find this word um, dominion uh, is in Genesis chapter uh, number one, and it comes from the Hebrew word manleka. Uh, and a, and a manleka uh, is the word for dominion, and, and I've given you uh, what uh, dominion means, power, rule, uh, and, and authority. Now the dominion, watch this now, the dominions uh, of the kingdom. The dominion of the kingdom was prophesied uh, by Old Testament prophets. In Isaiah chapter number two, you know what that says. That is all you Bible readers, you know what that says. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain, exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it, etc., etc., etc. Well, now, uh, that is a prophecy of the coming of the kingdom of God. That's the prophecy of the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 2. So what does Isaiah say? Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 2, he talks about the dominion of the kingdom. Uh, uh, the, he talks about the kingdom of God in its first dominion, in its first rule, in its first reign, in its first authority. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 2. Let me take you to, to, to Micah uh, in the Old Testament. Micah uh, chapter number 4. Now, uh, you are familiar with Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 2. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse number 2, it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord house shall be established in the top of the mountain, exalted above the hills, etc., etc., etc. Well, Micah requotes that. Michael requotes Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 in Michael chapter 4. Uh, almost the exact words uh, uh, Michael uses uh, in his writing, in his prophecy, in Michael chapter number 4. Now, I don't have time to read all the Michael uh, uh, chapter number 4. Uh, that is the verses because I'm going to go down to verse number 8. But uh, I want to... Uh, emphasize uh, and back up what I just said. Uh, Micah chapter 4. We're in Micah now, not Isaiah. Uh, Micah says, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. Now this is Micah. This is not Isaiah. This is not Isaiah talking. This is Micah talking. But he is requoting what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter number 2. Well, what does Isaiah chapter 2 uh, say? What is the reference in Isaiah chapter 2 so far as the kingdom is concerned? Well, the reference is to the first dominion of the kingdom because the kingdom of God in the New Testament has not been established yet. Jesus has not established. As a matter of fact, Jesus has not come yet. Uh, but Isaiah and Michael points to the establishment of the kingdom of God in its dominion. Now, if you stay with Micah chapter 4 and you look at verse number 8, here's what you will see. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, unto thee shall it come. Uh, verse number 1, you, you through verse number 5, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. See, Michael talks about the first dominion, and that's what I'm talking about. I I'm talking about the first and second dominion of the kingdom, where Isaiah and Michael talks about the first dominion of the kingdom. They prophesize about the first uh, dominion uh, of the kingdom. 
Uh, that's um, Isaiah chapter 2, uh, verse number 2, Micah chapter 4, verse 1 through 8. And Micah mentions dominion. It's in verse number 8 of uh, Micah chapter 4, uh, Micah says in the latter part of the 8th verse, even the first dominion, that's where I got this text from, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter uh, to the daughters of Jerusalem. So we're talking about the kingdom in his first dominion. Uh, Michael and Isaiah, they're prophesying about the coming of the kingdom in his first dimension. Now, not only are they doing that, but in Mark chapter 9, in verse number 1, Jesus says, Some of you standing here shall not taste of death till you see the kingdom come with power. What does dominion mean? Dominion means power. So uh, Jesus now, or Jesus is preparing the people, his people, for the first dominion of the kingdom. Some of you standing here shall not taste of death until you see the kingdom come with power. That's the kingdom in the first dominion. Don't forget that. Isaiah prophesied about the kingdom in his first dimension. Uh, Michael prophesied about the church in his first dominion. Jesus refers to the church in his first dominion. Some of you uh, uh, shall not taste of death until you see the kingdom come with power. He is referring to the kingdom in his first dimension. The kingdom has not been established yet because the kingdom is not going to be established until you know, uh, until after Jesus uh, is risen from the grave and has gone back to heaven. Uh, that of, that's, that's of course, that of course is when the kingdom is going to be established. And not only that, but uh, in, in Isaiah chapter, in Acts chapter one, and verse 8, Jesus said, you shall receive power. What does dominion mean? I told you to circle that word power because I was coming back to it. Uh, Jesus says, uh, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He is pointing to the day of Pentecost because it is on the day of Pentecost that the first dominion of the kingdom will appear. That's why Jesus came. He came for the purpose of establishing the kingdom of God in its first dominion. I'm trying to hurry here, but there's a lot that, that I need to say. But, uh, but, but I want you to know that Jesus referred to the kingdom in his first, dimin uh, uh, first dominion. Uh, now, uh, we understand, those of us who are believers, those of us who are members of the body of Christ, we understand that the church of Christ was established on the day of Pentecost. That's the first dominion. That's the first dominion of the church of Christ. It was established in the city of Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost by the apostle after the first resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when the church was established in the city of Jerusalem uh, on the first Pentecost after his resurrection, that's the first dominion of the church. Now, don't forget the definition and go back to it and look at it. I don't have time to do all of that. But uh, uh, the definition of it uh, references power, authority, reign, kingdom, and all of that sort of thing. So when I use the word dominion, I'm talking about the reign of, of the kingdom of God. When I use the word kingdom of God, I'm, I'm, I'm referring to the power of the kingdom of God. I'm, I'm referring to the authority uh, of the kingdom of God in his first dominion. In his first dominion simply means when it was established. That's the first dominion uh, that was spoken of by Isaiah chapter 2 and Michael chapter 4. That's the first dominion of the kingdom. And it was to exercise power. It was to exercise authority in the world because Jesus was going to reign. He's going to reign. Now, you know uh, the, the text that talks about uh, the kingdom uh, is with, with, uh, within you. That's the reign. And, 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 and if you will note that uh, and pay attention to that word dominion, uh, reign and authority and power and all of that 
happened on the day of Pentecost. When the church of Christ was established on the day of Pentecost, that was the first dimension of the church of Christ. That's the first dimension. Uh, the first century Christians were in the first dominion of the kingdom. 3,000 obeyed the gospel and they became the first to enter into the first dominion of the kingdom. And of course, the disciples went uh, through, throughout the then known world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ during the first dominion. And people obeyed the gospel. Uh, as a matter of fact, the apostle was accused of turning the world upside down with the gospel of Jesus Christ. But that's the church in its first dominion. Paul was in the church, in the kingdom, in its first dominion. Now let me show you how you connect Colossians chapter number one and verse number 13. Uh, Colossians chapter one and verse number 13. Paul says, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into. Paul was in the first dominion of the kingdom. He was in the first dominion of the kingdom. All right, get that. That's important. Not only was Paul in the first dominion of the kingdom, but if you turn to Revelation chapter number one uh, and about verse uh, number, uh, number nine, uh, where John says, I, John, uh, uh, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom. John was in the kingdom. Paul was in the kingdom. In its first dominion. By that I mean that era when the church of Christ was established in the city of Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. And then throughout that first century, that's the church, that's the kingdom in his first dominion. Now, Paul was in the, the church, in the kingdom, in its first dominion. Now that's important. I, I, I gotta quit here, but, but, but that's important. Paul was in the kingdom, in the church, in its first dominion. John the Revelator was in the church, in its first dominion. Now, Get this, those of us who are members of the body of Christ, we are in the first dominion. Members of the body of Christ all across the world are in the church in its first dominion. The first reign of the church, the first rule of the church. We are in the church first dominion as I speak. As I speak, we are in the first dominion of the kingdom of God. All right? Now then, when Paul says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and at his appearing and his kingdom, now we are moving to a second dominion. I want to say that again so you don't miss it. The first dominion of the church is the kingdom of God as established by Jesus Christ on the day of Pentecost and it extends down to us. We are not members of that kingdom. We are not, mem no, we are not, we are not members of the kingdom that Jesus established. All right? Now, Ah, uh, but when you get to 2 Timothy, watch this now, because I'm, I'm connecting this. When you get to 2 Timothy chapter number 4, 
Paul says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and kingdom. He is referring to the second dominion of the kingdom. Because Paul was already in the first dominion. John the Revelator was in the first dominion. As a matter of fact, uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4 uh, is, is, is where we... Um, is what we are discussing, but, but I want to emphasize something here uh, to show up uh, this, this proposition. Second Timothy chapter number four, uh, we know what verse one says. Now, Paul says uh, in verse one, I charge you, uh, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. But now, uh, uh, look what he says in verse number eight of Second Timothy, uh, chapter uh, number uh, number four. Uh, he says, "Henceforth, watch this. Henceforth, there is laid up for me. There is laid up for me. I don't have it now. I don't have it now because I don't receive what I'm about to tell you." I don't receive it in this first dominion. Paul is now taking us into the second dominion. He was already in the first dominion. He had already obeyed the gospel of Christ in the first dominion. He had already been translated into the kingdom of God in the first dominion. But watch what he says in verse number eight. He said, henceforth, after this, that's the second, second dominion. He said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I don't have that crown now because I'm in the first dominion. I won't get that crown until I'm in the second dominion of the kingdom. Let me, let me show it to you again. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day. He's referring to the second dominion of the kingdom. So then, in Second uh, Timothy chapter number four, it becomes powerful. And we should not disparage it. Because it is so powerful. And the teaching of Second Timothy chapter four is so powerful. Paul admits that there is something yet for me to receive. There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord shall give me in that day. What day is that? The day of the second dominion. Dominion. When is the second dominion? When Jesus come back. And that's what we see in, in verse number one at his appearing. So at his appearing is the second dominion of the kingdom. Second Timothy chapter four and verse one does not refer to some thousand year reign. What it is referring to is what Isaiah referred to. What it referred to is what Michael referred to. And that is the second dominion of the kingdom which Paul says, there is a crown laid up for me. Where is that crown? In the second dominion. When is the second dominion? First Thessalonians chapter number four, verse 15, 16, 17, you read it, write it down, read it. And that's when the dead in Christ is gonna rise first. And they are going to meet the saints who have gone on who were members of the first dominion, they will meet them and, and the second dominion will begin of the kingdom of God. So heaven and the crown of life that Paul was waiting for is to be received in the second dominion. The first dominion of the kingdom is the establishment of the kingdom on the day of Pentecost. 
The second dominion of the kingdom of God is when we are caught up together with the righteous that comes back with Christ, we will join them in the presence of Christ and go back with him on the clouds of heaven and thus begins the second dominion of the kingdom of God. We want to be. Now, you see, you and I, Golden Heights, you and I are in the first dimension. And our job is to work diligently to make sure that in that great getting up morning, when the last trump of God shall sound, when Jesus come back with the saints on the clouds of heaven, we will join those saints and we will forever be with the Lord. That's the second dominion of the church. That's the second dominion of the kingdom of God. And we should work hard, diligently, to be a part of the second dominion of the kingdom. Now let us not be like Adam was and Eve was. They lost their dominion in the Garden of Eden. When the devil entered the garden and tried and succeeded in getting Adam to eat the fruit that God said don't eat, Adam lost the kingdom that was given to him by God Almighty. He lost it. I'm going to prove that in just a minute. I know this is getting a little long, but I want to be sure you understand it. Uh, Adam lost. Adam, Adam and Eve lost the kingdom. And it is a terrible thing to lose the kingdom of God. Now let's look quickly at what it meant to the world and what it meant to Adam and Eve when they bowed to the satanic devices of the devil. What did they lose? You may, you may want to write these down. Uh, what did they lose? They lost the kingdom. Because God's intent was to establish a kingdom ruled by his children, Adam and Eve. But they lost it. They lost the kingdom. What did they lose? Number one, they lost their connection with their source of life. If you're out of the kingdom, you don't have a connection to your source of life. That's number one. Number two, they lost their intimate fellowship with God. Now this is our condition. This is your condition when you are out of the kingdom of God. Third thing that they lost, they lost their dominion over the earth. They lost it when they said yes to the devil. Number four, they lost their freedom and, and, and became slaves in the kingdom of darkness. That's number, that's number, I think that's number four. Number five, what did they lose, Adam and Eve, when they lost the kingdom? They lost the glory of their righteousness before God. And when we, as members of the body of Christ, understand this dynamic, that the original kingdom idea that God had in mind in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 was lost. It was almost like Adam giving the keys to the devil. 
And so what do we read in the New Testament? In, in, in the New Testament, in Luke 19, in verse number 10, Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that. I wish I had time. I, I, wish, I wish I had time. But you know, I'm a tent, I'm a, I, I'm a tent meeting preacher. Uh, but I don't have that kind of time. Uh, Luke 19 and verse number 10. Jesus came into the world to seek and to save that relative pronoun, which was lost. What was lost? The kingdom. Adam gave it over to the devil. And uh, and to establish a kingdom on earth as it is in heaven was the purpose of God. God gave the authority, here we go again, with dominion. God gave the authority, God gave the rule, he gave all of that to Adam and Eve. And they gave it to the devil, they lost the kingdom. And so Jesus came, and the scripture says to seek and to save that which was lost. The kingdom. That text does not say that Jesus came to uh, seek and to save those. It doesn't say that. What it says is that Jesus came to save that which was lost. What was lost? The kingdom of God and Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. And so when, when Paul writes to Timothy and says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, at his appearing and his kingdom, that's the second dominion. Paul was already in the first dominion. Just like James was already, I mean, John was already in the first dominion. And that's clear when you read the eighth verse of 2 Timothy chapter number four. Two dimensions of the kingdom. The first dimension is the dimension that you and I are in today. That's the first dimension. Our first dominion. And the second dominion, of course, is when Jesus comes back. And that first trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. We'll meet him in the air, and there we will forever be with the Lord. That's the second dominion of the kingdom. So when he appears, when the last trump shall sound, and those that are dead in the grave will get up and we will be changed in a moment and the twinkling of an eye. That will be the beginning of the second dominion. You will not be able to participate in the second dominion of the kingdom of God if you do not get in the first dimension. And you get in the first dimension of the kingdom of God like those people in Jerusalem got in, like Cornelius got in, like the jailer got in, like Lydia got in, like Paul got in, like John got in. So if you want, now, now here is the key. If you want to go back to heaven with Jesus when he comes the second time, which is the second dominion of the kingdom, you're going to have to be in the kingdom now, which is the first dominion of the kingdom. 
if you are not in the kingdom in the first dominion, that's, that's now, that's now, that's now. If you're not in the kingdom in its first dominion, you will not be in the second dominion of the kingdom. And that's when people of God, children of God, believers, go back with Jesus on the clouds to forever be with the Lord. In that land where there is no tears, there is no, there is no death, there is no pain, there is no sorrow. That's the second dominion of the kingdom. And that's what Paul is talking about here in 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Brother Preacher, how do I get in the kingdom in this first dominion? John chapter 3. Except you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. First dominion. How does one get in the kingdom, Preacher? You must be born again. How do, I, how do I be born again? How do I become born again? Just like they did on the day of Pentecost. When they heard the gospel, they believed it. They asked the question, what must we do? And here comes the answer. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now that's the first and second dominion of the kingdom. And all of those of you, include me, who are members of the kingdom, the body of Christ, established by Jesus Christ, we are in the first dimension. Let's be faithful. Let's be faithful. I'm going to say it again. Let's be faithful so we can participate in the second dominion of the kingdom when Jesus comes back again. God bless. Now, if you have questions, you send them to us. And uh, you can just type them up. You know how you use your phone there. Uh, and you can make a comment, ask a question, and I'll try to help you if I possibly can. Are you in the kingdom? Now, those of us who are in the kingdom, we're getting ready now for communion. And we are asking those of you who our members of the body of Christ, wherever you are all over the world, you can participate with the Golden Heights Church as we commune this morning. We do this every first day of the week. And so we're going to ask now that wherever you are in the world, wherever you are, wherever, you, wherever all believers are that are in the kingdom, we're getting ready to commune. And we're going to commune with the cup and the bread. Matthew 26 and verse number 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. Acts chapter 20, verse number 7. Let's pray for the communion. Now, our Father, thank you for the communion. Thank you for your son and we commune this morning as we drink this cup and as we eat this bread we do it with Jesus on our minds love you Golden Heights always a pleasure talking to you look forward to seeing you because I know the Lord will make a way. Now, those of you who have not sent in 
Uh, your offering, you can do it even at, even now. Uh, there are electronic ways to get that done. I don't have to go into that. But we just appreciate all of you everywhere, the members of our church everywhere, who are responding in terms of giving to the Lord every first day of the week. Let us pray now. Our Father and our God, we thank you so much for this day and all that is meant to us. Bless this sermon. Bless it that it might fall on honest and sincere hearts. And those in TV land and radio land who have not yet come to Jesus in this first dominion of the kingdom, in this first dominion of the church, that they will make up their mind. Now is a day of salvation. Thank you for blessing Golden Heights. Thank you for blessing churches of Christ everywhere. Thank you for blessing Christians and believers everywhere. We would ask you to keep them in these trying times. We ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Oh.